have all heard stories of haunted objects. For example, there's the story of the doll Annabelle, a Raggedy Ann doll that now sits in a museum that was owned by the Warrens, who of course were very famous demonologists. There's also the story of Robert the doll, another doll that is pretty haunted. Well, today we're gonna talk about a particular house that is inhabited by mannequins. And of course, mannequins can be classified as a form of doll. Well, this house is not only haunted by mannequins, but the owner of the house also remains a bit of a mystery. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Our channel right now is up for the possibility of being monetized. Our channel has been in review with YouTube for about two weeks now. I'm not holding my breath because we have a lot of videos that I know are not gonna be okay for YouTube standards because we talk about a lot of really dark topics. And because of the amount of work that we put into each video, we have put up a Patreon for anybody that feels so inclined that wants to support this channel. By joining Patreon, you are helping us do things like buy a new camera or perhaps create merchandise. And if you are a Patreon, if you do decide to join our Patreon page, you will be one of the first to receive merchandise in and with if we're able to produce that for you. Obviously, if you're not in the financial position to join Patreon, we absolutely understand. But if you are and that's something you would like to do, you can follow the link listed below. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're gonna to be talking about the John Lawson House. Now this video today, this story that I'm bringing you is a fun story. Of course, there's a huge mystery to it. I think I know the answer to the mystery, but it's fun all the same. And I thought it would be nice to have a fun story because lately we've been covering a lot of really heavy and dark topics. So today you get a little bit of a break with something fun. The John Lawson House is a very old house that is in New Hamburg, New York. Now, New Hamburg is a hamlet in Dutchess County, and the biggest town to New Hamburg is a town called Wappinger Falls. Now, this town isn't that big either. It's only got about 5,000 people people and its population. Now, obviously, the John Lawson house was built by a man named John Lawson. There's not a whole lot of information on this man. All we know is that the house was built in 1845. Now, we do know that John Lawson was a descendant of the original colonists to come into the area in the 1600s. Now, New Hamburg is right on the Hudson River, and the Hudson River was, is a very important river as far as transportation of products. And still to this day, North Hamburg is really known for two things. One, for its marina, and secondly, for the Metro North Railroad Hudson Line Station. And it is this railroad station and some history behind this particular railroad station that gives us the potential for hauntings in the John Lawson house. But you see, these hauntings aren't like normal hauntings because as I said in the opening, there are mannequins that live at this house. And just as the doll Annabelle holds a spirit and the doll Robert holds a spirit, many people in the town believe that these mannequins that live at the John Lawson house hold the spirits of 22 people who died in a tragic train accident in 1871. In the winter of 1871, 
this area experienced an extreme cold snap for about two weeks. And in fact, it was on February 6th of 1871 that a major accident happened about 200 feet from the John Lawson house. At this point, the train was called the Hudson River Railroad Line. And on this particular day, a 25 car freight train was heading south on the southbound line. Well, in this 25 car train, they were carrying fuel. And apparently there was a broken axis and something about the cold weather made the rail, the, the train jump to the northbound tracks. And unfortunately, there was also a train of people heading northbound and it couldn't stop. And so there was a collision that ended in flames where 22 people died. But that's not the only fire that happened in this area because you see in 1877, another fire consumed the main street area of this little town. And in fact, the John Lawson house, as well as one other house, were the only two houses that were spared in this fire. Now, from what I could find, the John Lawson house stayed within the Lawson family for many generations. And it wasn't until about 2003 that there was a bill of sale to a new person. Now, this person owned the property, the John Lawson house, from 2003 until 2015. And it appears that the mannequins showed up one day in the late 2000s. Now, here's the real kicker. It appears that the person who owned the John Lawson house from 2003 to 2015 didn't live in the John Lawson house. Instead, these mannequins lived in the house. Now these mannequins are often positioned on the front porch facing the direction of the train accident that happened in 1871 or facing the other house that survived the fire of 1877. And it is important to note that that other house, it's abandoned. And it's not just that these mannequins are placed on the front porch or throughout the house. It's, it's these mannequins, they change clothes quite often. And they're often holding things like books or yarn. And the real kicker is nobody in the town has ever seen any living person in the house. And this is not a big town, guys. This is a tiny, tiny town. That's a hamlet to another tiny town. It's almost as if these mannequins are able to move on their own and change clothes on their own without any type of human intervention. In fact, days that it rains, the mannequins aren't on the porch. They go inside. There's also a vegetable garden that was kept up all during this time and no one ever saw a human being there. And even at night when the mannequins had gone in to go to bed, people would see the kitchen light on in the house. Again, no sign of actual human life around. Now this phenomenon with the mannequins lasted for years, for almost a decade. And then in 2016, the mannequins vanished when the house was sold. So I do believe that whoever owned the house from 2003 to 2015 were responsible for the mannequins, even though they were never seen on the property. However, because they were never seen on the property and because of the positioning of the mannequins towards tragedy of the past, I wonder if the people who owned the property didn't put those mannequins there in hopes that the spirits of those lost by the tragedy would find a new home within these mannequins. As if possibly there was some sort of sorcery that these owners knew how to do to give these lost spirits a chance at life. Now this is just my assumption, 
my interest in the paranormal tells me that this this could happen and they do say that the old owners that had the mannequins have now moved the mannequins to another home located nearby i don't have a lot of details on this home and I, and i do 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 really hope that everybody watching this will leave these people in peace and leave the john lawson house in peace as well because it is owned by new people now or was the john lawson house and its mannequins just a gimmick to get people to come to the town i don't know i mean i really don't know seeing that the owners were never seen on the property and the mannequins seemed to move themselves makes me suspicious that this wasn't a gimmick and this was perhaps just a way for people again to give spirits something to dwell in but I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget that I will be back on David Zublik's channel again tomorrow to continue our discussion on portals. And I hope you guys will join us. We're going to be going again over Huska Castle and Vivalver Castle in a little bit more detail. There will be a link below where you can follow to get to David's channel to subscribe to him as well if you weren't already subscribed to him. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. And once again, thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music and to Todd Roderick for being our producer and helping me edit. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.